Laser, laser. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll teach you. Laser is... Oh! 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 Yeah. Naughty. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Why I believe MongoDB is the dog's bollock. <laughs> uh, Questions of a confused web developer. <laughs> uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on in the web, right? It's changing all the time. Uh, there's just too much to keep track of. Too many cool new toys to try out. Um, if there's one thing that you you want to take away from tonight, I would say check out MongoDB. <laughs> <laughs> Ricard's got a good point about event sourcing and using the right tool for the right job, but I, I mean, I think MongoDB is the right tool for every job. <laughs> um, you know, to put the, the dog quality in perspective, for those of you not so familiar with the English language, basically you've got bollocks, which is bad. You've got dog nuts, which is a bit better, but it's kind of polite. And then you see the big, big jump up, you know, for dog bollocks. So that's why I went with dog bollocks. You've also got the cat's meow, which some people might not know about, but it's usually saved for sexual innuendos. <laughs> so, so to give you a little bit of a, an, an idea where I come from, and yes, I am a bit of a Star Wars fan. <laughs> My first uh, computer programming was with Basic. I think that's probably the same with everyone, maybe. I don't know. But um, it was at school, it was a school project for my GCSEs. I was supposed to create a, well, I, I decided to create an information kiosk for an imaginary town. I actually failed the course because I spent the whole time creating the imaginary town. You know, all the businesses, I, I didn't really catch up with. So, ah! So then. Oh lord. Oh, yeah, let's go back. In 1997, I moved to Miri, Sarawak, and I started Flash. I also started web design, so I guess Flash was my first modern programming language, action script. Um, big front end guy, which kind of means you know I shouldn't like databases. Uh, and I don't really. 2005, I uh, moved to KL, I started with HTML and CSS, and I also started my own web development company. It was about this point that I was confused. <laughs> uh, yeah, SQL, wow. That is bad stuff. 2010, I joined a company. I left my old company, NI Limits, and I joined a new company, Lao Lima. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> At Lao Lima, I met Mongo, and I fell in love. Oh. 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 <laughs> Just a year after that, I was getting some recognition in Silicon Valley. I, uh, I won a mug, an actual mug. And some I won a prize to South by Southwest as well, so that was nice. So, confessions. The biggest confession of all would be, I'm no master, for sure. Uh, the real masters are the, the sysops guys, the people that can, you know, Gareth's over there, that, that can set these servers up and get them replicated and stuff. I just need them to work. <laughs> if it works, then I can rock on. And that's the point. You know, the second confession is that once it's all set up, once it's working, it's just a dream. It's a dream come true. It's really, really simple. For example, the biggest misconception. There is no spoon. <laughs> or need to leave your app. By that I mean I haven't gone to I haven't gone to any database admin place for I, I haven't seen Mongo for two years. I've just been building apps. I haven't left my apps, I haven't opened up a database to see there's just there's just I, I mean it's, it's hard to explain. You've got to gotta be there. There's there's no language barriers. All your logic is in one place. There's no there's no you know, putting a bunch of logic over here in a database and a bunch of logic in your app and then trying to get those two to talk and, you know, calling up your sysadmin guy and can, I, can you add a new database for me? Can you get some tables in there? Can you change? You know, none of that happens. You just do it in the code and it changes. I think that's quite common with NoSQL in general. I mean, it's all part of the, the scheme of this design. It makes it quite easy. So, you know, a couple of the big reasons why I actually choose MongoDB. It all started with geolocation. Um, my front-end development, front-end design skills come from geolocation, come from, uh, and as you might know, Foursquare. I think some of you may have heard of Foursquare. They're using MongoDB, so I figured, well, if they're using it, maybe I should give it a go and see what happens. And the result of those tests was that I found out it was bloody fast. Um, actually, in, in my benchmarks, which was the geolocation specific, I, I came up with it being 6,000 times faster than SQL for doing the geolocation stuff that I was doing. 
and it was for, for, for discovering that I won the mug. So that was a good, good time. The, the biggest thing, seamless, JSON data. Uh, this is freedom. This is a new. This is this blew my mind. This is this is you're building out an application and, and and you ask to put some information into a table into a collection. And if the collection doesn't exist or the database doesn't exist, the database will get created. The collection, the table will get created, and the data will go in there. Again, there's no need to go and go to your database and set up specific collect tables or rows or collections, you don't do that, you just do it in the app and if the stuff doesn't exist it's going to create it for you. So this really is freedom. It's got replica sets and sharding built in which is too technical for me to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little bit like that and basically what that means is it's load balanced and packed up from day one. This, is, this stuff's built in, it's not stuff that you've got to build, you know, download and extend, they're not extra plugins, this is just the way it's been built. It's been built from day one to scale for the web. It's been built in the, you know, relational database. You say the 80s, 1974. It's before the World Wide Web was built. So how we could be using a database for the web that was built before the web. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing with SQL? Come on. <laughs> it just works. Huh? It works. <laughs> yes, it's coming it from works work. Yeah, okay. okay. So last but not least, GridFS. I don't know if any of you heard of GridFS? Yeah. Yeah, no. You get to store the media files inside the database and serve them from the database, such as your images, your, your audio, your video. Um, it sounds okay, yeah, but what it really means is, it's, again, if you've got replica sets built in and you've got sharding built in, no, I don't want to answer any of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> what, what have you got? Can what you see? Huh? Can you see the video? Yes, you can now. You couldn't about four months ago. I went to Silicon Valley and moaned at some people and they put that function in. <laughs> <laughs> like a boss! <laughs> uh, so that's pretty awesome. Again, it's like a, it, everything's backed up and, and served in chunks. Um, ooh. ooh, some time, time for some codes. <laughs> Just a couple of, couple of screens to show you how simple it is, really. So, yeah, we initiate Mongo. This is assuming that we've got everything set up, assuming we've got the PHP drivers in there. <coughs> we're going to create the database, which doesn't exist yet, but we're doing this inside our application. We're not going anywhere to create the database. It's the first time we've ever mentioned the word free square. We're creating a collection. Actually, that should be an end. What place is? Um, so then we're going we're gonna to populate an object, which is just everything runs in arrays, everything's object based, array based, very, very simple. This is all going back to the... So the title is this, our location is this, that long point, and the results, we're going to insert that object into our collection. That's it, job done. We're doing that, we've created the database, we've created the collection, we've put this object into the collection. All done. So what do we do once we've got it in there? Okay, we can get it out. You can get it out. Yeah, if it works. I think you switched it off. Get the slide out. Oh, go. back to. Okay, so that's a little bit geeky. This is getting the geospatial index in again directly from the application. No need to go to the database and run the index. This is just giving us that. So now we define my location now, which is this point. Now we're going to do a geo near query command on the collection. That command is also an array, it's array based, the queries are array based. You don't have to use, uh, I can't even remember now, the SQL syntax, the, the writing in, in English and, and getting the computer to talk back to it. Yeah. I have news. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, so we've got our place now, we've got our place from this collection and if we echo out an adjacent encode then any Ajax listeners are going to be able to pick that up. If you're using something such as G-Spot, for example, you're going to end up with something like this, which is just going to show you your location and the nearest location. That's it. Yeah. Learn more. Um, we've got a, the, the, the Mongo user group. It's the first Wednesday of every month. And that's, the next one is on the 5th, I do believe. It's taking place here in the Hall of Washington. So I hope you can make it and learn more. <laughs>